This experience happened many years ago. I'm 23 now, but I grew up a scout. I started with the Cub Scouts, then transitioned to the Boy Scouts, and eventually earned the accomplishment of becoming an Eagle Scout. Throughout my years as a scout, I've been on countless campouts. Many friends came and went as kids quit the scouts throughout the years. But one friend who stuck it through the whole way with me was Justin. Me and Justin were in the same grade, and we were close friends. At the time of this experience, we were both going to be entering 10th grade, 15 years old. As weird as it sounds, I honestly don't even remember what park we were camping out at. It was just too long ago. As soon as everybody had arrived, Scoutmaster Davis led the group on our hike to the campsite. After setting up our tents and having a quick snack, Scoutmaster Davis led us on another hike as the sun was starting to set. He liked to take us on hikes in the dark, as he thought it taught good directional skills. On the way back, we had to use our flashlights since it was getting too dark. Mr. Davis played a little game to mess with the younger kids, acting like we were lost and they had to find the way back. He had one of the younger kids start to lead the way back, but the kid soon froze in his tracks and looked to Mr. Davis, claiming he heard something. Mr. Davis acted all forest rangery, stepping forward and making a listening motion, me and Justin laughed out loud, and he shushed us. There was another sound, a very obvious step from a larger creature in the distance. Kids were shining their flashlights all over the place. Mr. Davis assured us it's okay as long as we make a lot of noise to keep any potential predators away. I gotta admit, it was a bit scary hearing him say that. Mr. Davis led the way back from there on out. But on several occasions, either me, Justin, or some other kid would point out steps coming from behind us. Clearly something was following us. Mr. Davis told us to just stay with the group and not to refrain from making noise. We got back to the campsite where we cooked a couple turkeys, popped open a few cans of corn, and then sat around the campfire where Mr. Davis began telling his famous stories. However, it was interrupted by footsteps circling around the campfire. Scouts started turning around looking into the woods. Even the Scoutmasters looked at each other. Assistant Scoutmaster Roberts hopped up, said, All right, this'll scare him off, and went for the gun in his tent. He pulled out his rifle and fired a shot into the air. We didn't hear any more footsteps after that. After a whole hour of listening to Mr. Davis's stories, Scouts started heading to their tents. Me and Justin were in the same tent, and knowing how early the Scoutmasters made us get up, we didn't really joke around for too long. The only sounds now were the crickets and the crackling of the fire outside. I fell asleep quickly, given how exhausted I was from all the hiking, but woke up to Justin nudging me. When my senses came to, I listened, and heard footsteps coming from outside the tent. The campfire was still lit outside, and it created a glow on the tent walls but it also allowed us to see the shadow outline of what was outside. A person. I whispered, So what, it's probably someone just going to take a piss. He told me to open the zipper and peek outside. I did what he said, and to my horror, there was some heavy-built man with a sack over his head and a ripped working shirt, very clearly holding a big knife. He was walking around some of the other tents. I zipped the opening back up and told Justin to be quiet. We had no phones or anything, so we couldn't call one of the Scoutmasters. All we could do was wait. We couldn't tell if or when the man had left. We just sat there for what felt like hours, waiting, and eventually we fell asleep. We awoke to one of the Scoutmasters blowing that stupid wake-up horn. Me and Justin were surprised that we even fell asleep given the situation, but we immediately went to go tell our Scoutmasters what we saw. All three of them took our claims very seriously and wanted to make sure we weren't joking. They had no choice but to tell everyone to pack up and call their parents to get a ride home within three hours. Now this is the really weird part. Two of the younger kids in the group had their entire bag stolen which mainly contained their clothing. When the scoutmasters went to investigate around their tents, we were all disturbed to see that there had been tiny holes carved into the tents, big enough for someone to look into and that's exactly what the holes were for. The Scoutmasters reported the incident to the town in which the park resides. 
It still horrifies me, given how real the situation was for me, that somebody literally followed us into the middle of the woods, spied on two 11 or 12 year old kids while they slept, stole their clothes, and did whatever else. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but the incident overall hurt the group, as some parents refused to allow their kids to go on any more campouts. It's sad that some sick people out there can really ruin things for a lot of other people. I'm a 15-year-old Boy Scout from Houston, Texas. My troop flew us out to Denver, Colorado, and we drove to a camp called Camp Alexander, about 45 minutes away from Colorado Springs. Me and four other people in our troop were participating in the high adventure program that the camp offers. This basically means that we were doing things like climbing mountains and white water rafting. Four days into our trip and nothing has happened to us. We set up our tents next to the Arkansas River, as we would be rafting in it the next day. I sleep very poorly in sleeping bags and had been waking up covered in sweat every night, and that night was no different. I woke up with my face in a puddle of drool and sweating all over my body. I checked my watch and it was around 3.45 am. I decided that it would be best for me to step out of my tent for a while and cool down. I put on a shirt and shorts and unzipped my tent. The way my tent was positioned, the opening was facing towards the river and I immediately noticed that there was someone standing in the middle of the river facing downstream. The water was about waist high and 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit and whoever was standing in there didn't have a shirt on, so I was extremely confused. After a moment of staring, I realized that I knew this person. He was my friend, who I'll be referring to as Dalton for privacy reasons. I called out for him two times before he finally moved. He looked right at me, and then he looked around as if he were processing the situation. He yelled at me, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? He ran back to the shore as fast as he could. I grabbed him a towel and shirt and asked him what the hell he was doing in the middle of the river at 4 in the morning. He answered saying that he didn't know and that he had just woken up to me yelling at him in the middle of the river. I don't know how he got there or if he sleepwalked or something like that, but it was seriously creepy. Nobody believed us in the morning and we just decided to forget about it. Dalton said he had never sleepwalked before or anything like that, so I have no idea why or how he would have gotten into that river. All I know is if I didn't wake up that night and get out of the tents, my friend Dalton might have been dead come morning time. This is going to be a brief, horrifying, 100% true story of mine. I was 13 years old and one of the quieter kids in my Boy Scout troop. I'm not totally a shy person, but I couldn't really relate to any of the kids in my Boy Scout group. We were on our last campout of the 2008 camping season, it was in October, and it was a little chilly, making our many hikes a little more bearable. This was the last camp out of my life, and you'll soon know why. During one of our hikes, I was trailing behind the group as I usually did. I had the sudden urge to pee, so I let the group get a little further ahead, and then went behind a tree. I almost had a heart attack, as something made a heavy thud on the ground not too far away from me. It didn't sound like a stick or branch falling, it sounded like something putting its foot down into the leaves. I didn't know what to think, all I know is I was freaked out. I ran to catch up to the group, I had no idea what just happened, so I didn't want to tell anybody about it. I'll skip ahead to that night when I was trying to fall asleep. I had my own tent, as did some of the other kids in our tiny little troop, so I tried to go to sleep right away. A strange noise soon interrupted the silence, however. It sounded like breathing coming from a phone or something, and it seemed to be coming from inside my bag. After digging through my bag, I pulled out a big, heavy walkie-talkie. The only thing, I didn't bring or own that. Suddenly, in a deep, almost muffled voice, someone said into the walkie-talkie, I'm watching you, kid. I pressed down the talk button and said, Who is this? One of the other kids were clearly pranking me. There was no response, only this sudden static. Is this Mike? There was silence. And then... I'm right outside your tent. The fabric of the tent suddenly started pushing in on me as something from outside was pushing into it. I screamed like a baby, and that's when whoever was outside ran into the woods. 
Two of my scoutmasters came rushing into the tent. I could barely even breathe, but I somehow managed to show them the walkie-talkie and explain what just happened. They lectured the kids for a few minutes, thinking it was one of them messing with me, but when I calmed down, I stepped in and told them that the voice was way too deep for it to have been any of them. We were all forced to share tents with two others that night, and the next day, we packed up and moved to a nearby campsite with another Boy Scout troop. I really don't know what they did with the walkie-talkie. I was emotionally disturbed, embarrassed, and I just wanted to go home. I convinced my parents to let me quit Boy Scouts after that incident. It was by far the scariest experience of my life.